Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be playing with multiple, multiple layers in my art journal and this is inspired by Dina Wakely. So this page was created when I was on a real Dina Wakely go. I was working on my 100 day project and I was really struggling with just not getting too much inspiration of what I was doing. So I'd gone back to the Dina Wakely Art Journaling with Courage book that she had and one of her um, challenges was to create a piece of artwork that had at least 25 layers in it. Which for those people who follow my channel regularly um, should know that it's not really much of a, a challenge for me because I love adding stuff. So I, I took it upon myself just to go nuts and particularly because I'd done it straight after the piece you see on the right hand side which was very restrained for me with lots of white space. So it was just so much fun to go in and just add and add and add to it. So most of the products I'm using on this page are Dina Wakely products and stencils and I've basically just started out using some um, Sedona paint I think it was, scraping it out along the page, um, rubbing out using a wet wipe drying it off and then going back in with some of the lemon and some of the purple and now some Payne's Grey. The Payne's Grey, putting the dyke on the page so early was actually something really new for me. Um, I, I know I do put dark bits on my page before but I actually really love the, the effect of having something dark in the middle layers rather than sort of at the beginning or at the end. I'm just building up. Again, I'm using this stencil which I've been using a lot recently, which is the botanical stencil, another one of Dina Wakeley's. And it comes with the masks and the stencils. And I think the reason I really liked the dark on the page was I was then able to stencil over with the white. Again, not something I do very often, and I'm certainly starting to do it more because I really love the effect um, of the softness that the white gives over the page and just brightens up those dark areas. So you can see all these layers starting to build up already. You can also see down the bottom it's a bit grungy where I've sort of put wet stencils down and have some paint on it already. And that's adding to the background of what I've got. Now you can see here I've got a brand new stencil that I'm breaking out. Um, when I bought this stencil I thought I'd use it a lot and I never actually got around to using it. It's called a squoval. Um, Dina decided it's sort of mixed between an oval and a square, so she called it a squoval. Um, but it's again a really handy way of blocking out a large amount of your page with a bit of colour really, really easily. So I decided I'd sort of mix it up between having the large and the small, and again using contrasting colours. You'll notice as I'm going along too. Um, I'm not drying off in between. Now the reason for that is if you can see the application of how I'm putting on the, the paint, I'm using my sponge, I'm sponging it out again so it's a really light layer and it dries really really quickly. If you um, put too much paint on your sponge that's when you're going to have stuff bleeding through. So if you put out a little bit of paint then tap it out onto a, a surface, you get a nice even coating. If it's not dark enough for you, you can do what I've done on this page and then just relay your stencil over it and go over again with a second coat. But if you put too much paint on, that's where you're going to get things sort of squeezing out and making a mess underneath your, your stencil. So now I'm going in and drying it off just to make sure it's all dry. And I'm going in with this Stabilo Oil Pencil, this, this is white, just to sort of outline some of those shapes, help pop them out from the background again, especially in that middle bit that's got a bit lost. But I know I'm going to be putting a figure over this. So while I've been doing this, um, I've been thinking about, kind of thinking about the colours I've been using. Um, sort of those warm colours in the backgrounds, the, the oranges, reds, um, warm purple colour and then having those cool colours on the f in, in the foreground to sort of contrast against it. The good thing about using acrylics though is if you dry off the layers <clears throat> you can actually keep everything nice and separate so it will um, not mix up. What I'm doing now is I'm dripping down some ink, so I'm using the Dilutions ink in Tangerine and I think Sunshine Yellow 
and because I don't like waste I've got a whole heap of book pages and I'm just dipping those into the paper uh, the ink down the bottom so I hit it with the ink with a spray bottle just to help it drip down the page um, you could definitely use liquid acrylic inks to do this it would probably work a little bit better but I like the fact that the dye inks are a little bit more translucent so it does pick up in the white in the background and you can see it sort of soak into the page it does sit over the top of the acrylic paint as well but um, it's not as uh, obvious as if I'd used acrylic ink. Now this is one thing that I did take from the Dina Wakeley book, um, Art Journey with Courage. She um, put some collage across the middle of her page or about two thirds down. I, when I put the gel medium on you do need to be aware that the dye ink is water reactive so it will react and you can kind of see some of that yellow coming through into my book pages I don't really mind that it's mixing up together but just be aware if you particularly if you're using a brush and stuff you may get your brush tinted a bit yellow so that um, book page I suppose is kind of like a grounding effect it goes off either edge and it gives something for the figure to sort of fit onto and look like she's not floating in midair so this is where all these layers are coming in and doing this page I suppose because I had the I uh, the reference of the book I wasn't copying it exactly but I sort of had the reference of the book in the background I had a bit of an idea of how I wanted the whole layout to work which is not what I usually do I'm also using some of the um, Payne's Grey again to put in some extra stenciling over the top just to add in a little bit of darkness again to the page and pop some of those colours out. I'm finding using the Payne's Grey is a brilliant alternative to using black. Black is very, very stark sometimes and this is just quite black but it's not quite as stark. It's a little bit warmer and it just doesn't um, overpower the page as much. You can actually kind of see it if you have a look at the right hand page those circles are pure black and you can kind of see the difference between the two applications. I've just gone in now with some paint markers just to add a little bit of brightness with the yellow back onto the page drying everything off and for my figure I'm using this vintage photo. Um, when I was traveling a long time ago <laughs> um, about it's nearly 20 years ago now that's really scary um, <clears throat> when I was in Munich I came across a um, antique store and on one of the shelves it had for 50 euros a huge box just full of old pictures that had come from um, a photography studio when it closed down those landscape postcards all these sort of um, vintage pictures and just everything in this box and I've been using them over the years and um, obviously you can sort of see Tim Holtz has got on the vintage photo bandwagon so I've actually got some originals which I love using and a lot of these photos are from the um, late 1800s early 1900s and they've got beautiful handwriting on the back too and sometimes I feel a bit squeamish about using them just because I know they do belong to someone but then again I like the fact also that they're giving, getting a new lease of life and they were sitting in the back of a shop and they would have been thrown in the landfill otherwise. So um, yeah, um, it's, it's a hard one <laughs> but I like it. The other thing I'm doing on this page now is once I've put my figure down I use the um, collage paper that I dipped into that ink um, so I'm reusing that uh, to make the body of my doll. I'm just using some white paint to block out some of the background and make that figure come out to the front. Now the good thing about that is you can put on your paint trans translucent enough that you can kind of see what's happening in the background but it just blots it out enough to make it interesting and make that figure st stick out. So now I'm going in with some scribble sticks just to add some colour to my figure, colour up her hair, give her some cheeks and again kind of make it reminiscent of those old photos that have been hand tinted. I used to use special markers and so on to do that so I'm just using the uh, scribble sticks to do that and for a change I'm actually um, using the scribble sticks dry rather than wet. 
The one thing I have found, particularly about the new Scribble Sticks, which are these paler colours, I don't know if they're slightly softer due to their makeup or, or what, but I find that I can actually blend out the other colours really well with them. So you saw the purple and with the blue at the top. Once I put the paler colours over the top, I could really blend them in. Now that could just be the fact that I've already got a colour there and putting a second colour over the top is blending them, but um, I, I have found with the paler colours that I'm able to blend a lot easier. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now I'm sort of thinking about what I'm doing and going in and doing some quick journaling about this page and how much I was enjoying just adding the layers. And this was such a fun page to do because I was just having so much fun adding layers and having the permission to add layers even though <laughs> it sounds really stupid saying add, have the permission to do it but most of the time when I'm doing something it's like when should I stop I should stop now I should stop before I ruin it whereas with this page it's like oh look add another layer that's what this is all about trying to get 25 layers I don't think I actually got 25 layers um, but it was just so much fun to do and know that I could keep going and it was going to be okay. So I'm also going in and journaling across the collage again to kind of blend it in and give it a bit of a border and very much in a sort of Dina Wakely style as well with that asemic writing which is the illegible writing. So it, it is actual words but just making really big loops really big down strokes so that it, it's hard to read and it looks more like a pattern rather than words. I'm also, I've outlined my figure with um, Stabilo or pencil so I've just wet that to soften off the lines and just give a little bit of shadowing around my page. Now I was finding particularly the blue on the um, lady's um, hair wasn't it was just a bit crayony, so I actually went back and re-wet a scribble stick on my board and then just added in. I decided that I also wanted to put some of these words back into the background just to sort of tie the whole page together. Now I didn't actually line them up with the words that I'd already stenciled on the background, so I sort of had double images happening, which I quite liked, and because the white had already blocked out some of those words it it worked I really like the hey you don't overthink at the top which I repeated again because that's me I like to overthink so it was a good reminder of what I needed to do because I love this stencil so much I decided that I was going to put it on again and I'm going back in with the white and again just lightly over the top um, I didn't put out that much paint so I need to go back in and put some more um, also remembering that the yellow that you see on that book page is um, dye-based ink, which is water reactive, so it's most likely, it didn't really happen here, I think because the ink was so, or the paint was so thin going on, but you may find that that white paint gets tinted yellow eventually. Um, <clears throat> if you don't want to have that happen, dye your page with either a permanent ink or just use a, a really light wash of acrylic paint instead to dye up your paper. The final thing I think that I'm putting on this page is some collage words um, and this is the be you, be strong, be enough, de be de devoted, be content which I thought really tied in with what was happening on the background as well. So this is a very very Dina Wakely heavy page as you can see. All her paints, all her stencils, um, her scribble sticks, her semic writing style, um, inspired by her book. I'm just going in with some red Posca paint pen too and just adding some dots. So I'm adding them in three um, to draw your eye. I really liked, I, I love the combination of turquoise and red, the, the contrast between it because it's almost opposite colours um, and it really sort of helps pop the figure out of the background. So here's a close-up of my final page using multiple, multiple layers. It's a great technique in just trying everything. I do hope you have a go at it. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye for now.